So what's the best advice for sticking to a diet? Don't go to work. You can go to a restaurant and choose a salad or just have clear broth. You can stay home and eat the raw carrots in the fridge. But when you go to work, you can't escape the enablers, your fellow employees who use every trick in the book to make you eat that piece of birthday cake or drink that glass of celebratory champagne. What office do are they drinking champagne That's what in? I want to know. What can you do about these food floozies and drink dorks who simply won't leave your cubicle until you chow and chug? Nutritionist Elise Levine of Century City, the company Nutrition Bite, is here to advise us. Okay, let me read you the report that came out okay. of, yes, some 29% of people on diets say colleagues pressure them to eat more, and they can't stick to their diets. Are you hearing that? Hearing it, the workplace is a toxic nutritional environment. Really? Toxic. Let, I love this. Let me read you some of this stuff. You tell me if people have told you this. They, deep down, coworkers feel abandoned by a dieter. Some feel jealous because they're not losing weight, or they see a trimmer colleague as a career threat. I don't know in my experience that it's always the career threat, but it's more that if you're used to kind of going overboard with the cookies and the break room or happy hours after work, and then all of a sudden, you're kind of trying to stay away from those situations. I think your coworkers may feel guilty because they're still at it, or ah. that you're not, you know, partaking with them. You're kind of not there socializing with them anymore at those eating occasions. So I think those are more of the issues that come up. A little bit of jealousy, a little bit of the, you know, misery loves company. If right. you're eating with them, they don't feel as guilty about their food choices. So if all of a sudden you're. But it's like a social mm -hmm. thing. It, it is a social thing. You know, thing. everyone mm -hmm. gets together, like you said, going to happy hour after mm -hmm. work. And then, of course, when we have the holidays, people bring stuff in. Well, Course. That's the real danger zone. But how about those people who, according to this study, make fun? Like, oh, I wouldn't eat like that. You just need to eat in moderation and take a walk. Don't eat like that. You know, they make fun of people. How do they people do, do I that? think that's personally coming from their own insecurity about their food choices and their weight and their appearance. And again, like I said, if they don't feel good about themselves, they're going to want to bring you down, too. I think that's a common occurrence. Um, lots of strategies, though, that you okay, can use ahead. to combat that. One, <laughs> just say no. Ultimately, you are the person who's deciding you know what to put in I've your mouth. Do you know how many times I've tried to say no so to people? <laughs> All right, so here's Eventually, the... I just take the cupcake, put it on my desk, and then that little thing starts calling my name. <laughs> I get a feeling you like cupcakes. I'll do something about that tomorrow. I just like sweets in general. <laughs> so one thing to think about, though, is you can say, no, I'm not really hungry right now. You know, that's a good excuse, because it's not that I can't touch that food. It's that you're not physically hungry. Think about it as an analogy with a tank of gas in your car. If you're driving around, you have a full tank. You're not going to stop at the gas station oh, yeah, to fill it up. yeah, but you know what? I made this all night long, and I <laughs> really want you to taste it. Okay. Well, you know, I'm a good cook. And take that it case, and throw it away. Take it and leave it. In secret. Take it and leave it. Leave it in the trash can, leave it in your dog's bowl, or put it in your fridge or freezer and have it when you're actually hungry. Just don't eat because food's there. I think that's people's biggest well, issue with weight though. loss. Uh, the thing is, if you're on a diet, you're hungry. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's face the facts. You're on a diet, you're hungry. So then someone brings it in and says, oh, you take it, you put it on your desk, you're gonna, you're gonna fail. Yeah, but if you're on a diet, you're focused too. And therefore, I'm you never might... focused, Roxy. <laughs> I've never been focused in my life. Well, that explains <laughs> <laughs> the green nail polish. Back to that. All right, anyway. Yeah, no, I, I don't think it's necessarily about kind of dieting. Diets, for the most part, first of all, don't work because people think too much of good food, bad food. And yeah. what it should come down to is that you actually eat when you're physically hungry and you stop when you're satisfied. Try to go for healthy foods, generally speaking, but you shouldn't kind of blackball any foods altogether that they're on a no-no list. That just makes you want them more and you break the rules and you're off the diet. So I think, first of all, having healthier options on hand for when you do actually get hungry, but then not totally depriving yourself. And like I said, put it away. Take Take it, leave it. Leave it might be just until you're actually hungry to eat it. Give it to someone else. Always hungry. Share it. Share Split it. it. Smaller portions. Go. That's what it comes down to. I love that advice. <laughs> I wish I'd stick to it. Thank you. <laughs> Last thing I'd say is try to find other activities to do with your coworkers that don't involve food. You can still like, bond with them. Like take a walk at lunchtime. Take a walk. Or do more work. Yep. Isn't that a novel <laughs> idea? Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you Thanks so for much. having me. <laughs>